हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू एडू सर्च क्लिनिक्स कॉन्वर्जेशन आई एम डॉक्टर गुंजन देसाई इट्स एन ऑनर एंड अ प्रिविलेज टू वेलकम डॉक्टर फाल्गुनी शाह मैडम फॉर दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन मैडम इज अ सीनियर कंसल्टेंट एन एस थर्ट इज करंटली इन लीलावती हॉस्पिटल वेर वी वर्क टूगेदर आई लर्न द लॉट फ्रॉम हर मैडम इज अ ब्लैंड ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस वर्किंग इन बोथ द गवर्नमेंट सेटअप टूवर्ड्स द अर्ली इयर्स ऑफ हर करियर फॉलोड बाई प्राइवेट कॉर्पोरेट सेटअप वेर शी एज I will not say trained, but mentored a lot of students throughout their careers. So thank you very much, madam, for giving us your time for this conversation. For this being the World Anesthesia Day, uh, it is very fitting to share this stage with you and learn from your experiences. Thank you so much, Dr. Gunjan. Uh, thank you for having me on Edu Search. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to be here today. Uh, especially today because today is World Anesthesia Day. It's sixteenth uh, October, uh, which is celebrated as Ether Day all over the globe. Uh, because it was on this day way back in eighteen forty six that the first successful demonstration of anesthesia was carried out uh, on a patient who was undergoing vascular malformation excision on the neck. And uh, at the end of the surgery, when the patient woke up actually and said that I didn't feel anything. uh the surgeon and the all the viewers who were present then said that uh, yes this is actually the truth and uh, the surgeon said that gentlemen this is no humbug that's a famous line yeah. which is quoted uh, uh, everywhere and uh, that's how the journey of anesthesia began wow 175 years that's an amazing journey and uh, all of us will be very keen to know how things have evolved in these 175 years Oh yes, uh, anesthesia has evolved. Uh, I would say uh, it has changed completely over the last one seventy five years, and uh, it started. I think as you know, uh, patients used to get restrained. You know, people used to just tie them and operate on them, and uh, what a brutal way of doing it that was. But uh, they had no option. But with uh, major advances in medical field in various aspects, anesthesia has become much more refined now. much more safe and uh, you know uh, with the better understanding of our pharmacology our physiology and the techno- technological advances that we have which are incorporated in uh, our branch uh, anesthesia has really moved by leaps and bounds and it's much much safer nowadays uh, to the anesthesia uh, to experience the anesthesia for various uh, major supra major surgeries as we all know Yes, yes. We have seen you in action in the operation theater, and Madam has helped us with a lot of cases. So yeah, technological advances have definitely come up in a long way, even for surgery as well as anesthesia. True, right. But when we talk of technology, uh, there are some human qualities that are to be preserved when we evolve from yesterday to tomorrow. So my next question is that yes, we keep learning the technology. but what are the key qualities that all of us should preserve to be a very good doctor and a very good anesthetist uh oh yes very right uh, dr gunjan you have to say that uh, technology is extremely necessary it is complementary to our practice but it cannot replace human qualities yes. for sure you know so uh if you ask me the basic quality that any doctor needs is to have compassion and yes. passion for your work because uh, no amount of money can make you wake up at 2:30 in the night and rush for a highly demanding key emergency case yes. uh, over months years and decades you know see it can be done for short period of time yeah. but if you have to do it your lifetime you have to have passion for that so so that is one thing which has to be there machines and technological advances will definitely help you it will complement your expertise but you have to have basic clinical skills your uh, clinical judgment or acumen as we call it and uh, your agility during your work especially anesthesia is one of the very high demand uh, jobs i would say it's often compared with the cockpit of a yeah. pilot you know if, uh, so uh, you have split seconds to respond many a times not often though luckily but uh, it 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 is like that so 
those things of course uh, you have to preserve you have to develop over a period of time as you grow in your career and uh, yes make most out of the technological advances at the same time yes so yeah correct blend of uh, human qualities and technology Absolutely. is the key to be a good doctor so going ahead for anesthesia perspective uh, a lot of new advances are coming up in anesthesia like you said so uh, would you like to share some information on that direction on how to pursue a super specialization in anesthesia oh yes uh, a lot of super specialization has been started over last i would say 5 to 10 years mainly we have various fellowships uh, we have various dm courses you know like say in pediatric anesthesia or neuro anesthesia cardiac anesthesia regional anesthesia so all these fellowships and uh, dm courses are been coming up it's extremely good if you can super specialize in any one of the branches because then obviously you're focusing on that yeah. particular branch and you can really excel in that field it's it's uh, and you can really kind of uh, do research or whatever you are interested in in that as well uh, however at the same time uh, it's perfectly okay according to me to be a general anesthetic you know as it was in the past because see many of us like say for myself uh, when i was a student we never had uh, dm or those fellowships uh, very actively available in in our country especially and uh, but by working in a particular field for more number of years that's how people used to you know become yeah. pediatric anesthetist or neuro or cardiac during those days maybe so uh, and i am sure most of them are doing well but what is important is to upgrade yourself at each stage at whatever yeah. stage of your career you are you have to keep upgrading and keep up to date with the knowledge uh, so that's okay but yes for the students now it is uh, good if they have a specialized training in a particular branch of their interest uh, and then they can really excel in that particular field yes yeah. it, it it is important and uh, useful but again it's an individual decision i would say and again uh, that's a very good point that i would like to add is that when we say general anesthesia it does not mean that you are inferior to a super specialist absolutely that is what a absolutely. lot of students feel these days absolutely so uh, i think it's very important that super specialization is just to fine tune a specific yes. area of our skill yes and it does not mean that you forget the rest of the anesthesia uh, you said that we have to keep upgrading and updating ourselves and now how do you keep updating yourself with the recent advances in the field i i try to i will say i will not say that i have a, i keep upgrading always but i definitely try to uh, you know read uh, the articles journals or attend meetings uh, which really help you to kind of know what's happening around you you know uh, all over the world and now with the you know digital world it's really comparatively easier than what it was say about you know when i was a student uh, to kind of upgrade yourself working with the students uh, i will say that is one of the major reason you are kind of uh, compelled to upgrade yourself and also you learn a lot from them because they are you know young they are uh, much more tech savvy than what you are they are giving their exams entrance exams and so on and so forth so they are also pretty well upgraded and so so it's good to learn from there and i always believe that you have to be a lifelong student you know yes that's very true as they say learn while you teach and teach while you learn i think that summarizes what uh, madam is trying to say uh, going to the next very commonly asked question uh, is this ongoing debate of practicing in an institution predominantly a government setup uh, versus a private corporate setup Uh, versus freelancing which is uh, you know something that you can work any place any time uh, since you have been experienced in institutional as well as private setup how would you advise someone who is just joining the field to approach this uh, issue uh, yes each setup has its own uh, pros and cons i will say one has to decide for oneself which suits them the most depending on their circumstances and their uh, what they want out of their you know practice yes. 
major differences I would say is yes, medical college and institute, it's it's like going to be a big department and uh, you will have a lot of students, you will have a lot of academic activities plus variety of clinical work mm -hmm. is tremendous in any any government yes. or uh, you know municipal setup that you have. Uh, so a lot of learning in both clinical and academic terms there. The advantage uh, uh, if you are looking for a little you know little kind of uh, limited hours of work and all yes you can have there mm -hmm. uh, many a times uh, more flexibility as far as your holidays are concerned stuff like that which matters at certain stages yes. of life uh, a lot. Uh, private corporate practice uh, again it's it's a usually a very good setup to work in. Again, the variety of cases you get is equally good if you're working in a good busy setup like the one which we have at Leelavati. And uh, yes, you have a departmental setup. So yes, you know, you have kind of backup of, uh, you know, in case of difficult mm. cases or more demanding jobs, you have the backup, you have assistance. So that matters a lot, you know, when you're doing major work, you know. Uh, so, so yes, that is there. Uh, of course, it's a little demanding in terms of your patient's yeah. clientele is uh, uh, more demanding at times. And uh, yes, here also we have academic uh, uh, meetings, etc. Because we also have the NB students. So, so that part is uh, there. Some of the corporate setups doesn't have that. Yeah. Uh, freelance, I would say, is uh, is a little different uh, ball game altogether. Uh, you have to work in different setups on a given day. Yeah. You know? On the same day, you may end up working in a, uh, you know, in a uh, big hospital as well as some small nursing home with very limited resources yes. available to you. So yes, uh, that's a little different game. Uh, there, probably you have more free time for mm. yourself for the same amount of work that you do. Uh, involves a lot of traveling at times, uh, especially during your initial days of practice. Yeah. And one major thing I feel uh, what is stressful about it is you don't have any backup, you know, mm. in case you end up in unanticipated emergencies. Uh, it's it's a little uh, extremely high demand yeah. uh, areas, you know, with, with limited resources most of the time. Uh, talking about work hours and talking about uh, fixed time limit for duties, let's say, uh, in all these different types of practice, a lot of students as well as on, uh, practicing doctors are stressed and worried about not balancing their work and life uh, or using maybe terms like sacrificing family life for work, uh, which is sometimes tough to hear because uh, on one hand, it's our passion which makes us doctors. Uh, but yeah, there are issues with balancing work and life. Uh, so how do you manage stress and how do you handle this work and life balance in your life? Uh, something that everyone can learn from you. Oh yes, it is It is a little difficult at times to balance both. But I guess you have to prioritize uh, yeah. for the, or during that particular stage of your life what, what is more important and uh, try and strike the balance uh, between the two. Have... Uh, have joys in small things uh, both at work and at home so that you have enough stress busters around you you don't have to really go like it's not necessary that you always have to travel out yeah. of your city to to get that pleasure you can enjoy while working uh, with your colleagues with your students with your uh, team uh, with whoever is you're working you can have short trips, you can have whatever your hobby is, be it painting, music, or going out for a film. Everything is a good stress buster. Yeah. Having a nice chat with some good old friend is it, it's itself a good stress buster at times. So, so you, you have to have those short breaks uh, intermittently. Like I personally love to travel and I see to that, uh, you know, I take frequent breaks maybe short or long depending on the uh, uh, present circumstances but so that that is one way I uh, and then planning for the travel itself is a good stress yeah. buster so so that uh, you have to find yourself uh, yes. what suits you the best and uh, under that circumstances what is your priority and I guess uh, you can do it of course you need a very understanding uh, family, family to support uh, in your decision and uh, 
Uh, what would be your message to all the students out there uh, who are looking at the today and the tomorrow? Few message, uh, you can call it a message or my observation or whatever. I would say that uh, be progressive and proactive hmm. wherever you are, in whatever setup you are. Uh, in fact, that's true for most walks of life, you know. So that is one. Uh, keep upgrading your CV in both academic and non-academic way uh, then uh, change is important change in yeah. life so so don't be afraid of change yes changes are stressful but then you have to face it and and uh, learn if you uh, enjoy it if you succeed and uh, if you don't uh, learn from that and just move ahead so change is important and uh, Enjoy what you're doing. Yes. So uh, then only you can go along yes. the way. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, if you are not enjoying your work or whatever you're doing, it's going to be tough. So yes. so enjoy, uh, find your interest and develop that, and uh, have have ways to kind of as you we discussed earlier, have stress busters. Know your stress busters yeah. so that you know you can have them around you and. Communication skills are extremely important. It was always important, but now all the more yes. uh, with uh, every patient and everybody uh, coming with Google knowledge, uh, you have to have ways and means to communicate the right thing to them when they come to you. So yes, communication skills are going to be extremely vital in your clinical practice. I think the most important yeah. message is that uh, work if you enjoy and enjoy while working. I think you Absolutely. don't need stress busters if you enjoy your work. Your work becomes a stress buster. Most of the thing, so, most of the things fall in place if yes. you uh, do that. Yeah. Thank you very much, madam, for uh, sharing your experiences and your life journey with us. It's been a phenomenal uh, experience working with you and learning from you in Lilaati. Uh, towards the end, I would like to say that we titled this video as Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. And I hope that this conversation justifies knowing about yesterday to all the students of today who will be the anesthetists of tomorrow. Thank so you thanks so much. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much.